What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today is one of my favorite things to talk about in the whole wide world. Fishing is really, no matter what, I love to talk about bass fishing, but top water fishing specifically, that is what got me addicted, I would say. It's an addiction. It's not even a passion. It's an addiction to bass fishing. I love it. I love seeing those fish come out of the water and blow up on top water. And more specifically, a buzz bait. This one right here is my accent buzz bait. And I'm going to dive into a couple ways of how I fish a buzz bait. This is really the only one I tend to throw. 99% um, of the time, if you see me throwing a buzz bait, I'm throwing this accent signature series buzz bait right here. Um, and I will change up colors. I'll change up stuff. I'll change up size uh, of rods, lengths, uh, you know, of, of line or different pound test of line. There's a couple things that I do, but for the most part, I just want to show you my system of how I sort of go about it. And, and let's just dive into some of the details right now. Let's go. We're here in Mexico. We are in the Dominican Republic. So I'm gonna tell you a couple different tips that have helped me over the years. <laughs> wow! Unbelievable! Jacob Wheeler makes history! Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do when you're selecting a, a buzz bait um, is you want to have one. For me personally, there's clacking buzz baits out there. There's small profile buzz baits out there. Um, there's a whole bunch of different, there's squealing buzz baits out there. This one right here is um, right at 3 8 It's 5 16 ounce, and, and it's, it's got a pretty heavy um, a frame. The reason why I like a heavier frame when I have a buzz bait is that allows me, if you get better and better at fishing and skipping, I can actually skip this bait and that, that frame um, of the actual wire will not bend. That's why I chose to put a heavier wire in my buzz bait rather than putting a thinner wire. Um, the advantage to a thinner wire is open water, you can cast it and, and your blade will wobble a little bit more, which might give your buzz bait a little bit more action um, or your actual bait because it'll wobble it a little bit. But the advantages of that really for me is not that much. So that's why I chose to go to a thicker wire uh, buzz bait. And then as far as colors go, you really, I keep it standard. Blacks, whites, uh, green pumpkins, um, translucent shad colors. I do, I will go to a translucent shad color, like a, a blue glimmers, um, anything like that. I try, you know, they're really keen on small shad and small bait. I will actually go down to a smaller or a more translucent color. So, but this one right here, we're gonna start off with this setup right here. This is my seven foot medium heavy action rod. And the key with that is, is I want more of a parabolic rod. I want a rod that has a fast tip or a little bit of a faster tip. It's more parabolic down here, but that fast tip does allow for me to make that right cast. Um, this rod right here is actually set up with 20 pound suffix fluorocarbon, so the suffix advanced fluorocarbon. I don't always throw fluorocarbon, but if I feel like for some reason I'm pulling the bait out of the fish's mouth, um, then I will go to a, a monofilament or a fluorocarbon. It has a little more stretch than braid does. I like throwing braid. This setup right here actually has 50 pound braid. It's the same setup, it's seven foot, medium heavy action. So I will go to monofilament or fluorocarbon um, if I feel like I'm missing the fish uh, or I'm like reacting too fast and I'm seeing the fish blow up. And, but most of the time I'm throwing 50 pound or even 40 pound, depending on if they, I'm trying to make longer casts, but typically 50 pound stuff, it's 832 braid um, right there. But 99.9% of the time I'm throwing my seven foot medium heavy action rod. So that's right there. So we're gonna dive in first to the skirted buzz bait because this is the buzz bait that really started it all, a buzz bait that has a skirt on it. Um, and so I, this is really the only way that I fish a skirted buzz bait. Um, and I'll go in here and I'll grab some ply or some, some little uh, cutters and I'm actually going to trim the buzz bait skirt down pretty low. I mean, I'm going to trim him down, I mean, a good bit. So I'm going to go down there, I'll trim him, trim him up a good bit. So you'll see that right there. It's all the way to the skirt, basically the very bottom of that hook. Then I'm going to take your favorite, favorite style of plastic, whatever that might be, um, that it has two appendages, like a crawl style. So I'll throw a crack and crawl on him, a smaller crack and crawl on him if I want a smaller profile. This is a bandito bug. And what I'll do is I'll take the sides off it. Now, if you have a lot of bandito bugs and use a lot of bandito bugs, you know that when you catch a lot of fish, sometimes you'll rip them up. I suggest that you keep those ripped up bandito bugs and just do this to it. So let me grab these, let me grab these little clippers right here. I'll cut it in half, just like that. Boom, boom. All right, and we're back. The big giant diesel boat went away. <laughs> Y'all heard that? It is what it is. Like you got to deal with it. We're out here in the, on the lake, and that's part of it. 
So the thing is, all I'm gonna do is take that bandito bug uh, and I'm gonna thread him on there, cut him in half. I might've cut him a little short, but it's about right. I'm gonna go all the way out and I'll give you guys a close up view of this here in a second. Like that right there. So you want just a little bit of profile to see black, you got a little green pumpkin. Um, and that right there is my setup. Now, not necessarily this color all the time. I'll throw black, I'll throw, I'll throw a couple different colors, but it's, I really like mix and matching my trailer color. So for instance, this one's a black buzz bait. I throw a green pumpkin trailer on the end. It's sort of like contrasted a little bit. One of my favorites from my old school, my buddy BJ, Brian Johnson up in Indiana, was a black buzz bait with a chartreuse trailer. So like I'll take like a white bandito bug, dip him in there. I'll even throw like a, a, a like a junior, smaller profile, dip it in there and it's a huge contrast, chartreuse and black. So it's a little bit different. I love that one as well. So that's something that I try to do, even with white and black, I'll play around with it. Sometimes it does seem to make a difference. And I'm gonna tell you a reason why, but why, I know a lot of people have asked me this. I'm gonna tell you a reason why I throw a soft plastic on the back of my buzz bait all the time. Every bit, whenever you see me throwing a buzz bait, I will always, always have some sort of soft plastic on the back of it. And there really comes back down to one key moment. Um, I've always felt like the fish got a buzz bait better when I had soft plastic on the back because it gives them something to inhale. But I'm gonna tell you the reason behind that is I was fishing, um, I was actually doing a seminar at the Indie Boat Sport and Travel Show. And I'd make a cast with a buzz bait and I threw a, a soft plastic on there, okay? And I didn't have any hook on there and the fish would come up, they would eat it. Something like exactly like this with a, a skirt, with an actual, with an actual little craw on him come up there and eat it and they would hold on to it and they'd swim down there and they'd swim around and they would, they'd, they would, they'd let it go 10 seconds later. So then I took that craw off there, I cast it out there, boom, boom, they blow up on it. Guess what? They wouldn't hold on to it. They didn't have anything to hold on to. They had skirt. And I realized, I'm like, when that fish goes up there and sucks that bait in, I need them to have something to actually suck in and actually hold on to. That is the reason why I always, 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 throw a trailer on my buzz bait. This is the thing though, I will tell you, I tend to always throw a, a trailer that has two appendages because I want them to counteract each other. And what it does is it helps it plane out. The buzz bait needs something down there to help it plane out. So if I have two resist, two things resisting, like the, the appendages off a bandito bug, that keeps it to where it's the farthest down in the water to where those fish come up and swallow it. And that's a big thing as well. So that's it. That is all I do. I take these out of the package. This is a black blade, that accent, buzz bait, my signature series right there. Now let's dive into what I think is probably, it's become a huge deal over the last 10 years. And it really started with Chris Baumgartner. Chris Baumgartner is a Carolina hammer, a great fisherman. Just caught a lot of bass all over the country. But Chris Baumgartner started this whole thing. So I want to give credit where credit is due because that dude is a dang genius. Okay, so we just got finished up talking about the skirty buzz bait. Now we're gonna talk about throwing a buzz bait with a toad. This has become popular. Like I said, Chris Baumgartner is the man and really the pioneer behind, I, would, I believe Todd Odd and Chris Baumgartner, those two guys right there. I wanna say it was really Todd. Todd and Chris both, I, I don't know, because I don't wanna to speak. I know, I know it was either one or both. Both of them fish Lake Wiley all the time. They really started that whole deal. Um, throwing literally a toad on a buzz bait. And the reason behind throwing a toad on a buzz bait, and I'll show you like the dialed in thing here in a second, is number one, it's got more more weight, it's cast cast farther, um, and it gives you a little bit bigger profile. So if they're biting bigger, bulkier shad or something like that, it's a good thing there. So now this is the way that my buzz bait comes set up. This is without a skirt, okay? And I'm gonna show you the way to modify this to the exactly how I use it in tournament situations. The one that you're gonna need is either side cutters or pliers. I have pliers in the boat right now. I don't have the side cutters, but it's easier with the side cutters. It's pretty simple. So let's try to do that real quick here. These dudes right here should work just fine. So these are just like standard pliers that'll, that'll work pretty well. <clears throat> and we're gonna to try to use the sides, um, the little cut, cutters on the sides to work, make this work. So the key is, is I want the idea, the idea situation is I'm trying to be able to make it to where I can put this toad right here over this head. And right now that head's a little bit too big, which most buzz baits are. I can thread it on here, and which a lot of people do, <clears throat> like this right here. And this is what I ultimately was designed for, because the whole key behind me designing this buzz bait was to give the consumer a chance to use 
a buzz bait that they could do both with. They could use it like this right here, or they could ultimately put a skirt on there and use it that way as well. The problem that I, and this is, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it, it is a decent amount. So the reason why I don't <clears throat> tend to do it this way is because I want my hook to be back just a little bit further. I don't like throwing a trailer hook on a buzz bait with a toe. The reason behind that is, is your, your legs will get hung up on, on the feet and that's just not as efficient as you can be. So with that being said, I tend, I don't tend to throw it like this very seldom. You will never really see me throw it like this right here. You'll see me do that with, a, with actual skirt, but not like that. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you real quick here how to do this. So you're gonna need those side cutters or these pliers. <clears throat> and so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna actually grab a little bit of it. And you'll see I twisted, I take a little bit of this guy right here. There you go, and just take a little bit off, you'll see how it is. It's just a little, I'm just taking off, shaving off the sides of him to really round him. Basically that big, that fat part was what's gonna split your toads. Then, Okay, so you don't want to take off too much because you want to keep the weight of that bait. But you're just basically rounding the buzz bait to where it's easier. So that should be good enough, okay? So that's what it's gonna look like, a bolt. You're basically just taking the rounding that part off to where you have, <clears throat> ultimately, it's gonna be a little easier to slide that toe over. So now, <clears throat> sorry guys. So now we have the buzz bait finished, ready to roll tweaked it a little bit, ready to roll. I'm gonna take the toad and I'm gonna thread him on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way, all the way, and I'll show you, between the legs. See that? See how the, that hook point is between the legs? That's the key. I'm gonna wet that and then I'm gonna slide, because we cut that down a little bit, I'm gonna slide it over the head, okay? And there you have it, right there. That's the toad buzzer. That's the reason, and this is the thing, like I, see how far that hook point sits back on the buzz bait? That is the perfect scenario. Even if you had a trailer hook, <clears throat> I, I have it sitting right there, you'd have it back here a little ways. And I still, you can throw a trailer hook, don't get me wrong. The problem is, is say at one out of 10 casts, you're gonna have that leg come up and catch that, actually come up there and catch the, the trailer hook itself. So that's the reason behind why I set it up the way I set it up. I'll make a couple of casts real quick here, right here, and I'll show you sort of just a couple ways in retrieves. I really keep it pretty simple on retrieve. It's, it's pretty much cast and wine. There's a couple of things that I will do, and I'll give you guys these quick nuggets just because I want to see you guys get a few more bass. So let's do this right now. Okay, so when I make my cast out there, I'm going to slowly reel it. You see right there, I'm just reeling it real slow. <clears throat> then every once in a while, I'll twitch it, twitch. And I'm twitching it with my, I'm not even twitching with my rod, because I don't want that to ever, to actually, I don't want to get my reel off of, I'm twitching it, I either twitch it with my left hand, barely, or I'll, I'll do it with my actual reel handle. That's really the only thing, I'll speed him up, I'll slow him down, it's really just trial and error, but the thing is, the buzz bait, you have to keep him going because ultimately it's not, it's not a floating buzz bait. It actually has to, it has to rise up um, to ultimately have that blade turn to keep that bait up there towards the top of the water. I wanted to give you guys a good understanding of all this. And I will say last thing, I do throw this buzz bait right here and that buzz bait right there. I throw all my buzz baits on an eight, three to one gear ratio reel. This is my signature series reel. It's available exclusively at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Um, and, and the key is there is just faster gear ratio. You want something with a faster gear ratio because when they blow up on it and they come towards you, you can reel down and set the hook and have a lot more time to get that line and really be able to have a direct connect to those fish. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this content, we true, hey listen, go up there, seriously, thumbs up. Like, let me know. If you guys think this is pretty good, if you guys learned a few things from this and if there was some value there, do us a favor that helps us a ton on the algorithm. 
and it allows for other viewers to actually be able to see this video right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.